I'm Evelyn Ashley of Council at Moy White's Atlanta office as of September 1st, 2021. Prior to our merger, I was the founder and served as managing partner of Trusted Council, a corporate and intellectual property boutique for 17 and a half years. From inception, our firm followed the key principles of David Meister's book called The Trusted Advisor, which expounds the importance of a client-centric professional firm where understanding the client's business and business goals is a critical key to building longevity and loyalty in the professional relationship. I believe that following Meister's core principles to become a trusted advisor in a small firm made me an agile leader before professional service firms embraced the coined term agile. I'd like to walk you through seven ways we move forward nimbly and placed our clients at the center of our business. Number one, a business person ran trusted counsel. We shared a part-time COO with a client from year two of the firm who oversaw our financials. He worked with us to build budgets and provided support achieving them and helped us hire great people, not just lawyers. We provided active feedback to the COO for him to succeed in the job, our business goals and drivers, as well as provided him great independence to run the business of the law firm as our trust relationship group. We invested in technology. Our team members, not just lawyers, have always been able to work remotely. And we've invested in technology systems and policies to keep our clients' data and information safe, as well as stay on the cutting edge of technology to support our practice. Our team members had access to everyone else's project list to make sure client work was conducted seamlessly in the event of illness or absence. Three, we asked our clients how we were doing. An independent organization conducted client surveys for us periodically to understand what the clients liked, didn't like, and thought could be improved in our practice. We take their feedback very seriously and work to improve any time we do not score high on their comments. Surveys ended up being a great way to reactivate certain clients as a result of surveys where the survey questionnaire had an opportunity to tell them more about our services, we were able to develop client relationships at a much higher level. Four, we invest in our people. Business development and client-centric focus is not always intuitive, and we were a small organization. We provide our lawyers with access to top-notch business coaches, knowledgeable in legal practice to help them confidentially and confidently build their skills regardless of how long they've practiced law. Number five, one of our best client developers is a paralegal. You know what's better than a lawyer spending chat time where the client is worried about being billed? Having an outgoing, interesting paralegal or legal assistant that gets to know the client's business and spends time talking to them, all the while collecting information for feedback and use in the practice. This works so long as you give these people the flexibility to not build the time. It's not billable. Being a social human being is incredibly important to client development. Number six, think differently about business development. It's impossible to go to lunch with every client referral source. About five years ago, one of my partners asked me to help him with business development. He meant lunch. I wasn't interested, but I did say that I would think about what we might do. The universe presented itself as outreach from a local radio station that asked if we'd ever consider doing a radio show where the conversations were recorded and could be freely used for client development. And so our podcast, In Process, Conversations About Business in the 21st Century, was born. Was it successful? Yes. A few guests actually became clients. And our clients love that they can listen to these important business topics wherever and whenever they like. Number seven a COVID story. When COVID hit in March 2020, our law firm was on track for a fantastic year. Clients were growing at record rates. Then the shutdowns happened. One of our larger clients in New York shut down with Broadway on March 15th, laying off over 125 employees. So what did we do? We moved fast to support them. We read and summarized paycheck protection legislation as well as the process to apply for U.S. Small Business Administration's economic impact disaster loans, as well as various state grant programs, such as in New York, into a concise format, and then immediately started sending out weekly information to all of our clients as these programs developed and were available for application. We also provided complimentary remote privacy policies to all of our clients who didn't have them. 
we never billed for providing the general and one-on-one -on -one assistance we delivered to clients, as well as to several companies referred to us that needed help. We received many emails and comments of thanks during this anomaly in business. And thankfully, our clients all made it to the other side of COVID. We believe our success later in 2020 and in 2021 was helped by our quick move to support the clients with information to help them make it through a very tough time. So how do you operate a nimble organization? Here's seven possible ways. Allow business people to run your firm. Invest in technology. Ask for and act on client feedback. Invest in your people. Use non-lawyers to help with client development. Innovate your business development and invest in your clients. I hope some of my comments will trigger your thinking on becoming a more agile, client-centric law firm. Please let me know your comments and thoughts at evelyn.ashley at moywhite.com. Thank you. Well, hello, fellow Ally Law members. My name is Walter McCallum, and I'm a partner of Russell Kennedy Lawyers here in Australia. I'm presently a board member and operate out of the Sydney office. I want to spend the next five minutes or so talking about how Russell Kennedy has sought to be agile and particularly what effect COVID has had on our agility. I think it's probably trite to say, but a good starting point to say that the outbreak of COVID-19 has shone a very large light on agility and the need to be agile. And this is definitely the case for us here in Australia. And where, while here in Australia, a number of our infections, hospitalizations and deaths have probably been much lower than elsewhere in the world, We've also experienced significant restrictions on our freedom of travel, freedom to conduct business, and just generally our freedoms of association and interaction with other people. Having said that, however, I think there's a huge amount of optimism out there and we're quite positive about the future. So there's four things I really want to try and address in this brief time that I've got available that we've experienced in terms of agility. First and foremost is the health and well-being of our people. And that's not just our staff, but also our clients. So in terms of our health and well-being of our staff. It's always been a significant focus of ours at Russell Kennedy. However, with the onset of COVID, it's taken on particularly new meaning. And one of the things we did early in 2020 was to set up a working group to focus on issues relating to COVID. And that was firstly to ensure that the firm was compliant with all the government directives, and also to ensure that the health and safety of our employees in the workplace was maintained and, and optimised as much as possible. And since that time, we've introduced many programs that are focused on the health and well-being of our staff, including things such as online yoga classes, wellness coaches having one-on-one -on -one sessions, resilience classes, and even our principals are now undertaking mental first aid, first aid courses. In terms of continuity of client service, that's obviously been very, very important to us and the need to remain agile. That also has to be balanced, of course, with maintaining the health and well-being of our staff because it's they that have to provide that service to our clients. And what we did recognise very early on in the piece that we needed to invest and invest very, very quickly in improving our technology in order to be able to move to the online working environment and to ensure that our staff had all the access to technology that they needed in order to complete providing those services to clients. In terms of communications, obviously that's key to any good leadership we find and also particularly being agile leaders in, in order to keep our clients and also our staff focused on the goal, so to speak. The advent of audiovisual uh, communication, of course, has been a huge positive for us, uh, not just in terms of motivating our staff and communicating with our staff, but also importantly, communicating with our clients. Uh, whereas before we were only able to hold a limited number of people in our offices for webinars, we can now reach a much wider group of people through our online webinars that we have really ramped up and continue to do. And we found that that's incredibly popular and part of really what we see as the new future. In terms of internal communications, we've seen a real improvement through audiovisual means through regular uh, webinars and, and regular meetings within teams and also across practice groups. And we've now got a lot greater vertical communication going on from partner all the way down to the, to the youngest graduate, which has been a huge uh, bonding exercise, I would say, and also a huge improvement in getting the teams to focus on providing and continuing providing great services to clients. Lastly, the work environment, I think, is, is a big thing and a big shift that we've seen and really, really is important to uh, 
see where the agility piece comes in and how we're going to remain agile in the future. Um, the working environment that we had before COVID was one whereby probably about 90% of our staff were working in the office with only 10% working from home. And that's obviously uh, pretty much flipped during COVID. And now the big challenge for us as agile leaders is to work, about, work out how we're going to strategize and bring people back into the office. Obviously the workplace culture is key here and we need to have systems in place. So what we've done through our investment in technology is to enable staff to be able to work flexibly anywhere and with our systems and processes that we've brought in and getting a huge buy-in on consistent systems and processes in order to be able to bring those staff back into the workplace will be key moving forward. What we do recognise that things are not going to be the same. I think it's, it's, it's quite clear for us here in Australia that the way we practice law has changed forever. And that's both at a physical level as to where we practice law and also in the way we communicate with our clients and our staff. Thank you very much for your time today. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to discussing these issues with you all at the conference coming up. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Rod Yonker. I'm the CEO of the Summit Law Group in Seattle, Washington, in the Pacific Northwest of the, of the United States. We're an allies loan representative in the Pacific Northwest and, and uh, proud to, to be a part of the network. Wendy Horn asked me to, to talk to you today about um, recruitment and retention and, and firm culture and the role that it plays in that. She reports to me that across the network, she's hearing lots of challenges with people holding on to their staff or recruiting new positions. And, and um, she noticed that Summit just proudly finished in the top 10 best places to work in Seattle, and she felt that, that we might have some ideas to share with the rest of the group. Let me first say that, that um, uh, we are, like everybody else, feeling the strains of a COVID crazy labor market, and, and we have had people who not so much left Summit for greener pastures, but who um, actually have decided to, to drop out of the legal profession. That's something that's happening here, too. Uh, but we've also had a number of people who, who left Summit in, in search of other opportunities who've actually turned around and come back. Um, that's happened to us recently, both at the attorney and the staff ranks. And, and talking with those people about what, what drew them back to Summit, I think, has been informative and, and reminded us of the things that are part of our culture that, that we feel are important and that um, we think have, have made us successful in the talent competition for the last 25 years. Um, probably the, the top of the list for me to, to start with is that we pay our, pay our people very well. Um, that's not something that people talk about when they say what they like about Summit. Nobody says it's because I get paid uh, very well. But I think the fact that no one talks about pay is, is really a sign of success. What people do talk about uh, in terms of, of compensation is, is how we pay them and how we communicate about it. And, and that leads to my, my second point, which I think is, is a really fundamental part of Summit. And that's that we try to be very transparent with things around Summit, including and especially about money. Uh, we circulate to everybody in the firm every day an email that shows the cash receipts for the date what, uh, for the day, what, what clients paid us and how much. Um, we circulate our financial statements to the whole firm every month. And at the end of every quarter, we pay our staff a, a bonus um, that is calculated based on how the firm is performing against its, its budget and expectations. So those numbers go up and down uh, with firm performance, not with individual performance. And, and um, so we think that, that people have um, an interest in how we do as a firm and that they feel motivated to be a part of it. And, and they express that to us regularly. That's also true at our attorney ranks. Uh, as I think many of you know by now from interacting with us in other environments, we're an all partner model. We don't have associates. And, and that means that everybody here knows what everybody else makes. And importantly, they know why everybody else makes what they make. Uh, we certainly um, have a wide disparity of incomes among our, our partners, and, and that's based on their ability to, to generate work and, and the like and their experience and the like. But again, it, it's all obvious to people why, people why there are differences in our compensation, and, and I think that puts a lot of, of the strains of other firms kind of behind us and, and, and create a smoother environment for us to kind of deal with money. 
The other thing that I, I think that I would, would flag that, that has been an element of Summit for a very long time and continues to be an important part of our, our culture is that we're always looking for ways to use flexibility to our advantage. Um, we had paid family leave 20 years before it was something in the industry. Um, and we, we've had part-time partners ever since we started the firm, and we, we've figured out how to make that work in, in virtually all of our practice groups. And, and we think that that's created some real important opportunities for us to attract and retain people, particularly who, those who have young families. Um, and we've been pretty successful in experimenting with um, uh, uh, independent contractor kinds of arrangements for people who don't even want to have a part-time permanent gig, but who really do like doing um, high-end legal work um, in, in amounts that, that work in their lifestyle. And, and we've even had um, a particularly, a dazzlingly good, I would say, attorney who has worked for Summit from Mongolia and from Afghanistan and from all over the world uh, while she travels with her husband doing mission-based work uh, that, that is very meaningful to her. So uh, we've been leaning into all of those strategies during this kind of crazy labor market that, that we're experiencing just like you are. Um, none of that makes us immune. Uh, we're recruiting in every one of our practice areas right now and, and, um, and, and really need the help because we're, we're you know, a, a bit of a victim of our own success in terms of our workload. Uh, but we think that our package and our culture uh, continues to separate us from, from other firms in the area. And, continues to be something that the people are interested in and, and want to seek out in terms of a, of a quality of life environment where you can do great legal work and, and get fairly paid for it and, and have fun while you're at it. So that's our strategy. I hope some of those ideas are helpful to you and, and I hope that you're all doing well and staying safe in a very crazy time. Hope to see you live soon.